Good morning. My name is Joe Bandel, and I am the last Rosicrucian. Um, today we're going to talk about some things, and in this new series of videos, I'd like to say that I've been pretty careful with the terms I use. I use words like social enforcers and rational atheists because I don't want to get taken down. I don't want to have problems with this website. So you're going to have to kind of read through the lines and understand the people that I'm talking about here. We need new words to avoid the conflict that's and the censorship that's hitting these sites. But this is important information. If if it's if this post or this video is not clear, I'm going to be making it a little more clear in the other videos, so just bear with me. There's some complex subjects that's going on, and these are philosophical subjects that are important. There comes a time for some of us when we self-identify more strongly with our soul or observer self or our individual awareness than we do with our physical body. We realize we have a soul. This was the goal of the great religions, for the individual self-awareness or ego to identify itself as soul or non-physical and immortal. This is what was meant by the phrase to be born again, to be born into a spiritual body, a soul body. This stage of ego development had clearly defined characteristics that were unmistakable. For the person who achieved this state of development, they no longer felt the burden of an earthly existence. They no longer fought against earthly things because those earthly things no longer had power over them. They were not disturbed by the inconveniences of life because they only lived in the spirit world, feasting on spiritual food. They were preoccupied with thought and spiritual things. They gulped down food like animals, hardly knowing or caring what they ate or drank. They were always living in their heads and waiting for the end of their lives when they would be going to that physical, that spiritual world. Compare this view of life to that of the rational atheists. The rational atheists struggled mightily against the forces of nature and the hardships of the physical world. Their entire life centered around surviving and living as comfortably as possible. They made great strides in the evolution of humanity and in its ability to adapt to changing physical circumstances. They become masters of living on, on physical reality. It was only at the last minute that they recognized the power of the mind through the invention of reading and writing and turned their back on the physical world as well. But life that is turned away, but turn, when you turn away from the physical world, you no longer draw any nourishment from nature and that type of life is no longer life but living in your head just thought. And that's what happened to the rational atheists. They began, they lost their hearts and they began living in their heads. But try as they might, the thinking of the rational atheists was not the same as the lofty spiritual and imaginative thinking of the social enforcers. What the rational atheists sought was the true life and the true enjoyment of spiritual life, of, not spiritual life, of life, physical life. What they thought of was the importance of good health, beauty, wealth, and social pleasures. But what the rational atheists sought for the most, and now they're called the Stoics, was wisdom and life with a practical philosophy physical life. They wanted a calm and placid, unmoving life, one that ran smoothly without fear and without excitement. That was the best that the Stoic could come up with, since they could not get rid of the physical world even though they spent their entire lives rebelling against it. 
The furthest they got was to deaden their senses and become numb to life. Yet this doctrine of repelling the world and asserting oneself against the world was not a doctrine of spirit. It was not a spiritual doctrine. They could not attain the level of separation from the earth that the social enforcers enjoyed. It was the social enforcers, now called the skeptics, that truly made the break away from the physical world. They felt that any connection to worldly things was worthless and that earthly emotions and thoughts held no truth. The world was neither bad nor good, neither beautiful nor ugly, but only what we make of it. There was no longer any truth to be recognized. It was all contradictory. What one person called good, another called bad, and the only way out of the paradox was to leave the deceptive world behind and pay no attention to it. Okay, so what I've just described is basically two groups of people, the rational atheists and the social enforcers. Now, when you put labels on things, you really get into problems. And we're trying to avoid that. But in the context of this, this is a video I'm trying to clarify some things, and I'm trying to say that there's, in the truther sites, and I, I'm trying to be a truther site here, there are a lot of groups that are anti, what would, what would we say, Zion, uh, anti-cabal, cabalistic, uh, anti the elite bankers, uh, international banking system, things like that. Generally speaking, a lot of these people belong to the rational atheist group. What I'm doing is I'm defining, I'm kind of using a new term and I'm, I'm kind of de trying to define it so you know where I'm coming at in future videos. Again, making this distinction because I don't want to be called out, I don't want to be misdirected or have well, there's another thing, too. I believe the terms, the new terms that I'm using, are more accurate and more descriptive. And the other ones are just hot flags, emotional flags that get you in the, in the way. Uh, there's a lot of hatred against Jews, against, uh, as I said, the bankers, the international bankers, the Zionists. These people, primarily, uh, would belong, but are not exclusive members. They, they would belong to the group that I call rational atheists. They believe in logic and reason. They believe in living in the physical world. They don't really believe in a spiritual afterlife. They believe in community. They believe in keeping the memory alive of those that have gone before. So here's, this is some clues that I'm giving on that. Now, the social enforcers, they're into the psychic aspect of this. They're into the spiritual, the metaphysical aspect of these things. If you have people out there that are doing the Crowley thing, uh, doing the Satanist thing, doing the Christianity thing, doing the whatever it is that believes in an invisible reality exclusively and trying to get over there, these are the, the social enforcers. And they're very warlike. One of the names, how do I say this? The Aryans typically 
fit that profile. But that doesn't mean that I'm saying Aryans are this. What I'm saying is social enforcers, you're going to find them everywhere. You're going to find them everywhere around the world. We have to break away from these stereotypes that get us into problems. Okay, and I'm giving the, the clue here. So social enforcers are really trying to uh, tell us what's moral and what's correct and give us a spiritual thing that's beyond, you know, a higher, a higher goal, something higher than ourselves to live for. Instead of internal authority, they're trying to offer us external authority, external authority. The rational atheists are not necessarily trying to say that they are an external authority. They're just trying to find the best way of living in this world for themselves. The social enforcers are trying to be moral and spiritual authorities over the rest of humanity. So I'm, I'm going to... This is the context in which to listen to this uh, video and forthcoming videos that I'm going to be getting into. So because I'm really, because of the censorship issue, because of uh, the hatred, the political correctness and things like that, I am deliberately using words and concepts that I do not believe are going to be flagged as hateful or whatever. And there's a third type of people that integrate both the good parts of both of these things and reject the bad parts. And that group of people I belong to, that group of people I term as uh, organic Gnostics who believe in the wisdom of physical life, the wisdom of life itself, and this, its spirituality, how it, is, it exists both in the physical world and at the same time in the non-physical astral worlds. Well, I'm done with this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Pass it on. Consider becoming a Patreon. There's a link below to do that. I have a lot of other videos that are going to be coming and special videos that are only available to my sponsors. Thank you. Have a good day.